What's going on, guys? Welcome to Beauty and the Beast. I am the Beastly Gamer, and this is... The Beauty. And we're hanging today, man, playing something that uh, <laughs> that's kind of changed our paradigm of gaming for the immediate future, I guess. For the last week. It hasn't been, you know, a full week, but um, it's probably been, what, four days? Four days of playing this game? Yeah. And uh, the, the, the Last of Us Online has captivated me. It's captured my imagination, and I, I haven't played anything remotely as fun as this game online, and uh, it's just, what more can we say other than, oh, look at this. This, the feeling of doing what I'm doing here is absolute, absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it, it's just, it's not running around like Call of Duty and shooting people. Finding campers. It's it's actually out thinking your your opponent. Yeah, I mean, and I'm not just going to talk about it because I'm sure that uh, the beauty here has a few things she wants to interject about this game. This video is going to be is going to be this. It's going to be The Last of Us. So if you guys don't like The Last of Us, I apologize. This is something that's kind of new to us, and uh, it's kind of taken up our world of gaming for the last well since we've played been playing it online. I told the guys on Beastly Thoughts about this, and um, this is really, I, I just came home, I came home, Kate was in the living room playing this game, how, do you, how are you liking this, and uh, tell the guys and gals out there who uh, watch the show what you think sets this game's multiplayer apart from, um, you know, the, the big boys out there like, you know, Call of Duty Battlefield, of course, um, and, you know, what makes this game different as far as the team teamwork functionality like that. how we're with these guys here and Kate's in these games too she's Miss Bolden so if you guys see her kicking ass make sure you see that thumbs up and hit it let her know that you like it um so yeah we'll, we don't have my game I, I had a real great game the other day um, it, was, uh, it was yesterday right yeah no deaths seven executions six downs but, Horror vibes I worked on yeah she worked me it wasn't working them uh, Kate was on the wrong team and uh, it was just absolutely embarrassing what she did to me uh, destroyed. she destroyed everybody and um, she destroyed me as well and I could I mean we'll be the point of showing us losing as a team <laughs> and you getting like every kill well you didn't get every kill but you killed me a few times, but you like killed like the whole team, and people couldn't see you play because I gotta start recording my games. I told you to record some today, but you didn't have a chance. Yeah, I didn't get a chance today. I was busy. Okay, well, tell the guys and gals what you think about this game and why. Am I overblowing it? I mean, am I making this better than it really is, or just give it me might just be because we're new to it? Okay. Maybe it has died down for other people, but since we just started playing. It's like awesome. I'm sure people, when they first started playing this game, they thought the exact same thing. Well, uh, it was just something not... totally different, something new, not just a shooter like running around in Call of Duty, finding campers, uh, running just constantly and trying to shoot people. In this game, you don't run constantly. You have to sneak around, you have to craft stuff, you hide. You outsmart the other team to and get then behind you, you them. You get away like yeah. you need to, like how I just e evaded. You those can guys. you can run away and they're not chasing right behind you. They're trying to think of a plan to outsmart you, and you like maybe they'll jump out the window or come up from behind. You got to think of all angles, and you only get four people on a team, so you guys really have to work together. You have to have teamwork, or else this game doesn't work. No, uh, because if people are just running off everywhere, they're just getting picked off. And nobody's there to help if you're down. And uh, teamwork is essential. Oh, shit, shot in the face. And now I'm down. Um, to me, what makes this so, such an amazing experience is really you summed it up. Uh, the teamwork dynamic, especially if you have a, a mic. Yeah, yeah. But not a lot of people have mics. Well, some people have mics and don't use them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Kate's, believe it or not, I get mad at Kate. And I think I'm, um, I'm probably overly critical of her. Because to me, like when I see a gamer girl or a girl out in the world playing a video game, and I hear them actually on the game talking, it does something to me. I'm like, wow, it's a gamer girl. It's so exciting, especially if they're good. Kate's extremely good at, at, at a plethora of games, at a myriad of games. That's what Colin Mariotti would say. And um, she, uh, she like refuses to talk. And I'm like, why don't you say something 
Let these people know. I do know. sometimes, but sometimes it's just they don't either. They don't listen to me because I'm a chick, or they just talk crap because I'm a chick. Or sometimes it works out and they like listen, but I just sometimes I don't like dealing with it. I think a majority of the time you don't like dealing with it, but uh, you you sometimes you see a lot of you know disrespectful idiots out there in the world. I don't know how that shotgun blast didn't kill that guy, but he's down on the ground anyway. But yeah, um, talking to people is really important in this game. Letting them know you know what your plans are, what we need to do as a team, where the enemy is. Uh, crafting is a huge part of this game. You know, it's not like you can just. Um, run around, pick up items and throw them, you actually have to make them, you have to think about what you need to make for certain situations. You get those smoke bombs, those, and, and see, they don't work well with every layout, with, with every load up, because for me, smoke bombs don't work as well because I, I, I very seldom use the shiv or the upgraded melee weapon, so yeah. for me, the, the, the nail bomb is probably my, my favorite thing to use, but I've been seeing you play this a hell of a lot more than Call of Duty. Yeah, because I think it's funner than Call of Duty. I get more excitement out of it than Call of Duty. Ooh. Like, because I'm not terrible at Call of Duty, but... And Call of Duty's fun if you want to just pick up a game and play a couple rounds. But this game is just... I don't, it's more fun. Mm. I like it. It's more exciting. And, and I love it when she's It holds actually, my attention. Yeah, when, when you're playing a game, it's like... Sometimes we go through droughts like anybody. We'll go through a period of time where we're not playing a game and, uh, you know, I come home and ask her if she played anything and sometimes she hasn't played anything. It just makes me feel good to come home and see you kicking ass in this game and loving it. And so more than likely we're going to stick with this for a while. It's coming to the PlayStation 4. What are your thoughts on that? We're getting it. Of course. I definitely have to play it. Hopefully enough people get it though to have a nice online base. Well see the thing is, uh, we did the show Beastly Thoughts and uh, 9 to 5 and Briar Rabbit said it was coming out the 28th of June. And um, I did a little bit of looking around and snooping around and it appears that that was the original release date. They changed it. Well, at least one or two sites has said that uh, now the date has been pushed back to August. So I don't know just how um, you know true those statements are that we uh, you know gotta wait till August, but hopefully it's not true because that I mean this game is awesome. I'd love to play it until August on PS3, but I'm just I'm trying to imagine. I told Briar he has to play. Well, hopefully he, he will. Has to, he has to get it. You know, Dave, uh, he he I think he would love this game. I think he would probably like this more than Call of Duty. It's just so much more to it. But when you look at it, you don't understand everything that's going on in it, and that's the thing. You know, they see, uh, you know, a character crouching, walking around, but every type of scenario goes through your mind when you're playing this game. And I don't want this whole Beauty and the Beast segment to be about this game, but it really could be. I mean, that's, you guys who don't know, this game is really that good. And I'm not kidding. It's really that good that you just, you just don't play games like this, especially the online component. And then on top of that, you think about how fantastic the single player was for The Last of Us. And uh, <laughs> they add a multiplayer component that is this fleshed out. It's just mind-boggling to me that this game didn't get Game of the Year everywhere because this online is just so deep and enthralling. And we got uh, your oldest son playing it. He loves it too. Yeah, today's uh, today's his birthday. He was playing it when I came home uh, on the 40 inch and loving it. He's playing the single player too. Yeah, he's he's uh, started that. To work his way through that but he also plays online he said he really enjoys online yeah he, and likes, he likes it better trophies. than call of duty too well I'm, i don't know if, how long that'll last hopefully it'll it'll stay that way because I, I think this game has unbelievably long legs i think that look at the community right now this game is a year old and and you have no problems finding the game ever everybody's real nice and polite and cool well most people well, yeah, we did find one one or two people who were idiots, but you're going to find that anywhere. But I, from what I saw, I really enjoyed what I saw. I thought it was a great, oh, great yeah. experience. And that's the important thing. See how that guy revived me? We got up just in time to kick that dude's ass. If he had caught me on the ground, he would have been able to lay me out and potentially kill the other guy. I love this game. All right, on to other things, guys. I'm probably going to end on The Last of Us because I love this game. It's just it's so sick. We uh, we saw a movie. Um, what, We saw a couple movies, right? Yeah. We saw, which we're late on this too. I guess it's the late week. We saw Wolf of Wall Street with um, with Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Jack Dawson of Titanic fame. That was an intense movie. Well, I came home to it. Uh, she was watching it. Ouch. And um, 
But I, when I walked in the door, she was checking it out. And I, I I think I wanted to play this game. Yeah, but... And I was like, how long is uh, this going to be? And I sat down and I kind of got sucked into the world of what was going on. I, I forgot his the guy's real name that Leonardo DiCaprio was playing in that movie. But that is based on a true story. I, of yeah, course, I couldn't believe it was based I had on to, a true story. I had to look it up and find out, uh, you know, the, the true story of... The Wolf of Wall Street, and that he was really out there smashing all that ass and having a great time. Please, it's, he was an ass. He was getting all the ass. It's probably yeah, why you well, hate him. No, that's getting, why you like him. Hey, you didn't hey, see what he hey. did. He was a terrible person. Well, I, he was a terrible person, but you know the, the things that he did that I, I I don't totally dislike. I mean, I wouldn't do it myself. Like hookers and drugs. Look at him now. Look, go ahead and have fun with that. He lived and learned. Okay, look, King Solomon was the wisest man to ever live, and he was the wisest because he experienced everything. And so this character that Leonardo DiCaprio played is a smarter person for it. The fact that he dusted up thousands of asses and made millions Diseased, of dollars. Diseased, hookered. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he has diseases, and but he knows what it's like to have them. He knows what it's like to have a disease. He knows what it's like to not have one. He knows what it's like to be a drunk. He knows what it's like to be a, a cocaine addict. He knows all these things. And so he has a, a depth of perception on these things that most people will probably never ever have so I don't agree with the lifestyle of the movie it was a very good movie you know seeing it and, and sometimes truth is more hard to believe than fiction you know seeing what <laughs> the, the things that happened in this movie it was just unreal. some of them might be exaggerated but yeah his life was I mean, pretty the thing turned that, upside down he was on a boat that got a, a big yacht that got turned over and I mean, he Storm. had he, he had people, um, you know, taking millions of dollars FBI after him overseas to uh, you know have it laundered at a, a Swiss bank. It was just crazy stuff this guy was doing. He got away with it, but the thing is, obviously, he didn't get away with it on that level because now he he became an informant, right? Yeah. And uh, who knows how long that lasted? They may have embellished the ending a little bit to make him appear that, like he wasn't really an informant. But uh, he's talking to people and doing shows and infomercials. Yeah, so I mean, obviously things worked out for him a little bit differently than uh, he had initially planned, you know. But I really liked the movie. What did you think about that movie overall? For the people who didn't watch Wolf of Wall Street, it was okay. I mean, it was intense. Uh, I'd like to scale of one to ten. Let's I'd do like to one. find the real story though and read up on well, the Well, there's a there's a, a 56 minute documentary on it. Yeah, that's what I, I want to watch that. And you can, you know, it's Hollywood on movies are exaggerated for the effect yeah. in audience so I'd like to know what really happened yeah I mean uh, well Hollywood they, they have to embellish to make it entertaining entertaining enough for you to want to sit through it and watch it for two hours it's okay I'd, I don't know I'd give it a seven I think I would give that movie um, now guys if you if you don't like full frontal nudity uh, of the feminine type and that's the only reason he's giving it a high score guys what? Yeah. How do you know? Because I know you. When I see your full frontal nudity, do I get do I get uh, disgusted? No. I absolutely love it, right? Yeah, because I'm your wife. Yeah, you're my wife, but I'm a man, and that well, in in today's society, this doesn't matter as much because sometimes it doesn't work out this way. But I'm a man, and 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 that really makes sense to me, and it's beautiful to me, and I enjoy looking at it and experiencing all that God created for me to enjoy. You should only have enjoy. eyes for one. I only have eyes. But I like, you know, I like women, okay? Sorry. I mean, I'm not saying I would go and just say, hey, look, my wife's around the corner. Let's do something. I, I mean, I like the, fem the, the female frame. I like femininity. I like what it is. And uh, I like everything about it. I'm sorry. But if you guys like that kind of stuff, you like, you know, beautiful women, uh, sexy chicks walking around with nothing on, and you can see fur burgers everywhere, everywhere you might give this movie a 9 or a 10. Uh, for the story, for the acting, of course, Leonardo DiCaprio. Seth, what's his name? The chunky guy from... Um... It's not Seth Rogen. He no, was, no, no, no. His no, name no, was... No. Uh... What, what was the movie he did with uh, Scott Pilgrim? Um, Superbad. The, oh, chunk, yeah. the chunky guy from cool Superbad. Kid. He was in this and he played a role... He played it pretty good, though. Yeah, he, you wouldn't even believe it was him. He uh, played such a much older person, a geeky uh, stockbroker, and... Uh, he he, he, he nailed, nailed it. it. Yeah, he nailed it. <laughs> he nailed it. You wouldn't believe that it was him acting. He's such a good actor, and uh, 
the guy from The Walking Dead who played um, Shane is in it, and uh, he's like the muscle. It's a really good movie. The, the people who acted in it did a great job. You got these sexy women walking around and you know doing things in compromising positions, and you know. I would give the movie. <laughs> I keep talking about the women. Let yeah, me, because let me stop before I get slapped. That, that on shows Beauty what kind of what kind of man you are. Go what ahead. do you What do you mean? No comment. Go ahead. We'll leave it in the comment section below. I give the movie a eight, uh, a eight point five out of ten because it, it did have a great story. The fact that it was a true story made it even better. The acting was you know top notch. The, the effects that we did see were amazing, like the the, the boat capsizing and. Uh, it's frustrating to see a person go through the things this guy went through and know that it was real, but at the end of it, you see light at the end of the tunnel because he learned so much from that experience. So yeah, I give it like an 8.5 out of 10. We saw another movie, Oculus. Uh, this movie's in theaters, and um, it's a horror movie now. It's supposed to be. It, well, it's not bad. Um, I, uh, horror movies nowadays are just disappointing, Well, as Nova would say. Yeah, Nova would say it's disappointing. This, this video is making me disappointed. I uh, thought Oculus was pretty good. Um, it was okay. It, you know, it had some pretty legit scares. There, there's definitely been movies that have come out over the last year that was that were worse than Oculus. Um, it did have those moments, you know, watching the screen where it, it's a movie about a mirror, guys, and uh, and this this mirror has claimed like 47 lives. In the last few hundred years, and the girl, the main female of the movie, the protagonist and her brother, she had documented all this information on this mirror, and she and her brother wanted to um, basically, um, I, I don't know what the term is, they wanted to challenge it. It killed their parents, and, and when they were kids, they saw, you know, things in the house and in the mirror that any kid would know, hey, look, this is some fucked up shit, it's not real. But the mirror's doing it, and as adults, you know, the brother, he uh, went and saw um, a psychologist. The psychologist convinced him that it wasn't true. But they made a pact that children after their parents died, they would come back and defeat the mirror. So that's basically what the mirror, th this movie's about, Oculus. And uh, it had some really good jump scares. Um, I like, you know, imagery that can shock you. And, and it's not shocky in a, goring way, a gory way, but... When I was a kid, I lived in a haunted house, and uh, you know, I even made videos about some of the things that we saw growing up. And I remember stuff like the stuff that you know they showed in this movie, that the way that these entities interact uh, and how they move, and just the kind of things they do. It's almost like the person who wrote the movie had a little bit of experience with the supernatural, and that kind of stuff I can kind of relate to because I saw some really creepy shit growing up in Ohio in the houses that my mom and dad. Uh, the, well, the first house they bought, and uh, I, it's a testament to me of the realism of some of the things that you know you see in this house. And it was really creepy. Um, some some of the things you know really didn't make sense story-wise. There were a few gaps in the story, and you kind of wonder how they were able to um, you know make certain things work that didn't really make too much sense. But uh, the ending for me didn't make sense. Uh, when you see a movie, especially a new, um, a new uh, franchise, a new horror movie, you really, uh, you know, root for the person who you've grown to like in the movie, or at least uh, a person who's keeping you engaged to, you know, carry on and and and, and persevere through the film. And and I don't want to spoil anything, but when movies don't work out that way, it kind of takes a little bit away from it, and you feel like uh, maybe I don't want to see, you know, if they do a a part two, a sequel. I don't want to see it because I went It'd through probably all. Probably be terrible. I went through all this, and I probably have to go through it all again. Jeepers Creepers one, perfect example. <laughs> Jeepers Creepers was a, a super good movie. That was my movie. And uh, the ending of the movie took me completely out of the experience because, uh, you know, the 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 character that we all um, invested in uh, basically ended up being nobody in the end uh, and being, you know, gone. So if you take that as a spoiler, I, I'm sorry, but that's the one thing out of the movie that I did not like is the ending uh, and some of the, the story, the plot holes of the story just didn't really make sense to me. But uh, overall, the, the, the scary factor of the movie, yeah. I, I give the movie probably about a 7. I, it has to be a really good scary movie to scare me, so... Yeah, I, it's like a seven. I, yeah, I give it. There was scary. no full frontal nudity, but a ghost did show a titty. 
So, um, yeah. that's what that's what matters the most. But it was a it, it had the word boo tattooed on it. Yeah, uh, horror movies are definitely not what they used to be. Um, At all. Very seldom do I see scary movies that uh, make me, you know, excited and and really feel afraid. Movies like Insidious. When Insidious first came out, yeah. We were in the bed together watching it. And, and not a lot of people agree with us about that movie, but... It scared the bejesus yeah. out of us. Uh, we were really fucked up. I mean, we were in bed together watching it, and Kate, she clenched her butt cheeks together so hard that she almost killed Nova. Nova was in between us, and we watched the movie, and when we got done watching it, we had to make sure that Nova was still breathing. Because <laughs> she was a baby. Yeah, Nova was little, and, and we were laying in bed in Ohio watching this movie. And um, it was terrifying. I mean, really, the whole thing. The, the way that, uh, I forget the guy's name, the Asian director of the film. The way he presented the movie was so frightening. And uh, it, was, it just seemed so real and terrifying. And very seldom you see a movie like that. I mean, some movies are scary in a different way, like the Dawn of the Dead series. The new movie, I mean, the remake that came out in 94. Oh, yeah. I mean, some... Yeah, I like that movie. I mean, in two, it was 2004, I'm sorry. Um, some movies are, are scary in a different way, but like when you see a movie that, that really scares you in the sense of something supernatural, it, it, hold, it holds your attention because very seldom do they do it right. Yeah, like, um, what was that movie? The Conjuring. The Conjuring was better to me than uh, Insidious yeah. Part 2. I don't know about Insidious Part 1, but it was better than Insidious 2. I love The Conjuring. Some people don't like it as much, but at least that was based on something that really happened. And uh, I really love yeah, that Yeah, we movie. watched the real story of that, too. Hey, man, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with us and enjoying uh, this, this fantastic footage of this amazing game. I hope you guys liked it. Leave a comment down in the comment section below and let us know what do you think is one of the best horror movies to come out in the last 10 years. Uh, you know, something that will keep you uh, excited and scary. Something so scary that it'll scare me. If it's scary, leave it in the comment section below. Let me know. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.